hello everyone welcome to ca regulation 2010 lecture this is the last part that is the part 4 the topic is measures relating to safety and electric supply and i am richard basu with you you can see the regulation was amended in the year of 2015 and 2018 that means minor changes have been made in the regulation in the year of 2015 and 2018 originally it was made in the year of 2010 Today we will see the topics like overhead line material strength, recommended clearances, guardware and cable requirements and there is a slide on bibliography. First, we will go through the regulation regarding overhead line underground cable and generating station. Regulation 55 is regarding material and strength. Overhead conductor breaking strength shall not be less than 350 kg. However, if your voltage is not exceeding to 50 volt the span is not exceeding 15 meter and if the conductor is drawn through the premises of either the owner or consumer you can use a overhead conductor whose breaking strength is not less than 150 kg so from 350 kg you can use the conductor of less breaking strength that is not less than 150 kg if your voltage is low your span is defined and the conductor is laid either owners or consumers premises. Regulation 57 is regarding maximum stresses and factor of safety. It says that it shall be in accordance to the BIS. However, if it is not covered in BIS, then we have to follow following factor of safety. For metal support, it shall be minimum 1.5. That means the factor of safety shall be minimum 1.5 mechanically processed concrete support it shall be minimum 2 for hand molded concrete support it shall be minimum 2.5 for wooden support it shall be minimum 3.0 and for stay wire, guard wire, bear wire it shall be minimum 2.5 when calculating the factor of safety we have to consider some factors first maximum and minimum temperatures as per Indian standard second maximum wind pressure as per Indian standard Third, for cylindrical flies, the effective area shall be taken as full projected area exposed to the wind pressure. Minimum factor of safety for conductor shall not be less than 2 based on their ultimate tensile strength and conductor's tension at 32 degrees Celsius when there is no external load. Provided initial unloaded tension shall not be more than 35% final unloaded tension shall not be more than 25 percent however if three or triangular conductor is used final unloaded tension can be up to 30 percent now we will look into the clearances requirement so what are the clearance clearance is the distance from the nearest point to some charged conductor so the nearest point can be some person so for that we have to follow the minimum safe working clearance which we have seen earlier the nearest point can be some material like ground or some building again if it is a ground it may involve some street so we have the clearance along the street or across the street both are different limit or the ground may involve somewhere which is not a street like some field or some ground or some farming land again clearance from the building can be of two types one is the horizontal clearance and another is the vertical clearance horizontal clearance is taken where the conductor is passing by the your building that means it may be in front of our, your building vertical clearance shall be taken when the conductor is above your building the clearance can be from one conductor to another conductor so two different conductors they may be of different voltage levels or same voltage level of but belonging to different circuit we will see these clearance related regulations first we will see one photograph or one picture this has been given by CEA and it can be found in the sh uh, schedule so this is a building structure here may be some conductor here may be some conductor here may be some conductor the ground clearance is the lowest point of the conductor to the ground the distance is the ground clearance you have to take the sag most point while talking about the horizontal clearance you have to consider if the wind pressure is applied how much the nearest conductor can come towards your building so this may be the nearest point that the conductor may come towards your building 
So from that point two, you are building the distance is the horizontal clearance. Vertical clearance is that from the if you can draw a horizontal line at the lowermost point of the your charged conductor from that point or from that plane to the distance of your building's topmost position is the vertical clearance. Regulation 58 here we will discuss first the ground clearance. For lines of voltage not exceeding 650 volt along the street minimum clearance shall be 5.5 meter. So whatever limit we will discuss here all are the minimum value you can give more clearance at any point of time. Across the street minimum clearance shall be 5.8 meter. For lines of voltage exceeding 650 volt but not exceeding 33 kV along the street the clearance shall be minimum 5.8 meter across the street the clearance shall be minimum 6.1 meter. So we have seen the clearance requirement regarding the street. Now when no street is involved then for the conductor up to and including 11 kV if the conductor is bare the minimum ground clearance requirement is 4.6 meter. Here you can see the requirement has been reduced. And if you can use insulated conductor, 4 meter clearance is sufficient. So if you can insulate the conductor, you have a margin of 0.6 meter. For lines of voltage exceeding 11 kV but not exceeding 33 kV, minimum distance shall be 5.2 meter. Now the question is that if the system voltage increases beyond 33 kV, what should be our clearance? So it gives a formula that 5.2 meter plus 0.3 meter for every additional 33 kV. So if you can take a system voltage of 66 kV, the minimum clearance shall be 5.2 plus 0.3 that is 5.5 meter. Then it says another thing provided minimum clearance 6.1 meter for along or across any street. So suppose that 66 kV conductor is crossing some street or it is laid through or along some street then the clearance requirement shall be minimum 6.1 meter. Now if you calculate for 220 kV we will get 5.2 plus 6 times 0.3 that is 1.8 so the summation is 7 meter. As 7 meter is more than 6.1 meter so this 7 meter can be along a street across a street or ground portion where no street is involved. The limit is same for all of them. Regulation 60 is for the building clearances. So line clearance from building up to 650 volt. First no building shall be constructed under an existing line or no line shall be erected over an existing building as far as possible. But you can understand in today's scenario we are growing the electrical network in India and we are having so many rural electrification works. So meeting this criteria may not be possible. You cannot demolish a building which comes under your proposed route of line erection. So for that case what you have to do above the building you have to maintain a particular clearance of 2.5 meter from the highest point. If the conductor is adjacent to the building that means the horizontal clearance shall be maintained 1.2 meter from the nearest point of the building. Again if you cannot meet this then the conductor shall be adequately insulated. You can see this if you are living in some uh, suburban area you can see the street light pole conductors are insulated. Some of the street light pole conductors are insulated. Also it shall be attached to a bare earthware at a suitable interval. Why this is required? Because if the insulation is deteriorated then the live wire will first come in contact with the earthware and the protective device will work sensing the earth fault. That will ensure personal safety. The other requirement is that the earthware breaking strength shall not be less than 350 kg. Regulation 61 is regarding same the building clearance. However here we are talking about the system voltage more than 650 volt. So first no building shall be constructed under an existing line. Neither you should erect a line over an existing building as far as possible. However if you cannot meet that then for lines of voltage exceeding 650 volt up to 11 kV vertical clearance shall be maintained 3.7 meter and horizontal clearance shall be 1.2 meter. 
for lines of voltage exceeding 11 kV but not exceeding 33 kV, the vertical clearance requirement is same that is 3.7 meter. However, horizontal clearance requirement is more that is 2 meter. For lines of voltage exceeding 33 kV, again you have to calculate 3.7 meter plus 0.3 meter for every additional 33 kV. So, for 66 kV it will be 3.7 plus 0.3 that is 4 meter. If you calculate for 220 kV this is 5.5 meter. 3.7 plus 6 times 0.3 that is 1.8. So, summation becomes 5.5 meter. Horizontal clearance requirement is 2 meter plus 0.3 meter for every addition 33 kV. So, for 66 kV it shall be 2.3 meter. For 220 kV it shall be 3.8 meter. Regulation 69 is regarding clearance between the two conductors of different system voltages or different circuits. This regulation has given a simple table. You can suppose this tower is con uh, carrying a conductor of 220 kV. This is carrying a conductor of 400 kV. The distance between two nearest conductor shall be 220 here and 400 here the intersect point that is 5.49 meter. Suppose this is carrying a system voltage of 66 kV. This is carrying 400 kV. So 66 to 400 that is again 5.49 meter. Likewise. Regulation 70 is regarding the guarding. It says every guard wire shall be earth where its continuity is broken. This is understandable because guard wire has to be earth and when its continuity is broken it has to be earth of course. Its actual breaking strength shall not be less than 650 kg. It shall be made of iron or steel and it also has to be galvanized. It shall have sufficient current carrying capacity to ensure them to rendering dead without risk of using the guard wire or wires till the contact of any live wire has been removed. So what is the purpose of this guard wire? It ensures that the broken live conductor shall not fall on ground or over a person. So suppose if some live wire breaks it will first fall on the guard wire and that guard wire will carry the fault current. It says that the guard wire shall be capable to carry the fault current until the live wire has been removed. Otherwise if the guard wire if it is fused then the chance of personal injury will be increased and the purpose of guard wire will be failed. So that's why this regulation has been introduced. Regulation 72 is regarding earthing requirement. All metal and concrete support shall be permanently earthed by earthware and it shall be fastened to each pole so that each pole come in contact with earth and that earthware shall be grounded at least three times in every kilometer and as far as possible they should be grounded in an equidistant location. The barrier wires up to 650 volt shall be either insulated or earthed. The stay wire where the insulator is placed less than 3 meter of height then they shall be earthed also. Laying of cables, underground cables increasing a system voltage of 33 kV shall be laid at a depth not less than 1.2 meter. Have you seen one difference between the CEA regulation 2010 and Indian electricity rules 1956? In Indian electricity rules we used to talk about low voltage, medium voltage etc. High voltage, extra high voltage etc. Now, what I feel that uh, with the uh, increase of different system voltages, CA has maybe CA has thought that it is better to mention the actual voltage level. That's why in this regulation they have actually mentioned the voltage up to 250 volt, up to 650 volt, exceeding 650 volt, but not exceeding 33 kV, exceeding 33 kV, so on. So actually they have mentioned the voltage to remove the confusion. Now this is the slide on bibliography. I am. Uh, thankful to all these resources I am really thankful to them and uh, I am also thankful to you for your patience and watching this presentation please let me know your uh, creative feedback and uh, please subscribe my channel if you have liked so thank you for watching we'll meet soon in some other topic thank you